Hi, this is John Galloway with Microsoft. We're continuing our look at the MVC Music Store tutorial, and in this video we're going to be digging into controllers. That's a natural place to start because controllers really run the show in an MVC application. At the end of part one of the tutorial, we created a new MVC application using the empty project template. We're using Visual Web Developer 2010 Express, but you can of course follow along in any other version of Visual Studio 2010. We want to start with a home page, so we're going to be creating a home controller. I'm going to right click on my controllers folder, click add, and then click controller. The add controller dialog prompts me to fill in the name for my controller, so I'm going to fill in home controller. We're following the convention which says that every controller ends with the name controller. Visual Studio gives me the option of generating action methods for create, update, delete, and detail scenarios. However, those don't make sense for a home page, so I'm just going to click the Add button. This generates a very simple controller action for me. I'm going to make it even simpler by changing the return value from an action result to a string. Now I'm going to change the code to return a string. That's it. Now I can run my application. I have a few different options to run my application. I can click this little green arrow here. I can follow the prompt that it's giving me which shows that there's a keyboard shortcut which is F5 or I can select debug start debugging. My personal favorite is the keyboard shortcut. We can see that the ASP.NET development server is spinning up and it's picked a free random port to run this application on. And just like that, here's our result. We can see our page running. Okay, that was pretty quick. We created a new website, we added a three line function, and we've got text in the browser. So it's pretty simple, but we're off to a quick start already. Note that my application is running on port 26641. That just happened to be the random port value that the web development server found. Yours is going to be different, so keep that in mind when you see any screenshot showing a port number. Okay, let's set up a controller for our store. I'm going to close the browser. I'm going to right click on controllers and I'm going to add a new controller. We'll call this the store controller. The store controller already contains an index action. I'm going to change the return type to a string. And I'll have this controller action say hello from store.index. The store index is going to list all the genres our store is going to carry. We're also going to want a browse page, which is going to display all the albums for one genre, and we're going to want a details page, which shows the information for a specific album. Now we want to add in the browse and details actions, and we'll do these exactly like we did with the index method. So for browse, we're going to create a new method called browse. It's going to return a string, and that string is hello from store.browse. And we can do the exact same with details. We'll create a method called details, and it's going to return a string that says hello from store.details. Okay, let's run that and take a look. I run the application. It's going to spin up the home page. I'm going to browse to store. And here we see hello from store.index. Now if I change the URL to store.details, I can see hello from store.details. So that's great, but these are just simple strings. Let's make these dynamic so they take information from the URL and display it into the page output. First, let's change details so that it takes an ID parameter for the album ID. Now let's change the method so that it returns that ID. It's important for security to HTML encode any input that's coming from the URL to prevent users from sending in malicious information. So let's do that.
Here we're using server.html encode to sanitize our output. Now this is just an integer ID at this point, so there's no real opportunity for evil injection here. But as a practice, anytime we return a string to the user, we want to HTML encode it. Now that was especially easy because ID is a special case. ASP.NET MVC uses a system called routing, which maps URL values to controller action parameters. And in this case, there's already a default route with an ID parameter that's already included in a new ASP.NET MVC project. That's configurable and we'll look at it more later. We can also read query string values from a URL without any routing changes. So let's change our browse method so that it's going to accept a genre parameter. And now we'll change browse so that it's going to read that genre value. It's going to HTML encode it and it's going to return it as a message. Let's take a look at this. Now when we navigate to store slash browse, question mark genre equals disco, we're passing in a query string value, disco, and it's being read in by that controller action. And our store details takes that integer parameter and returns that ID. Let's review what we've done so far. In part one, we created a new project in Visual Studio, and we overviewed the basic folder structure of the MVC application. In part two, we've seen how to run our website using the ASP.NET development server, and we've created two controllers with four controller actions. They respond to URL requests and return text to the browser. In part three, we're going to be taking this further, looking at views and view models.